All right. Let's see what we've got right now with regards to triple integration. We have triple integrals in rectangular coordinates. And remember, this would be a calculation for volume. If there's no function here, we would assume volume. And the dv component would be in terms of x's, y's, and z's. We also have cylindrical coordinates, where if you think of it as the polar coordinates with z as the third dimension, or polar plus z, um, we would have dz, and then x and y would be converted to r dr d theta for our region. Well, there's one other coordinate system in three dimensions from earlier this semester that we haven't used yet. And those were spherical coordinates. Rho, the Greek letter rho, theta, the angle in the xy plane, and you can either pronounce it phi or phi, depending on how it is in the, in the Greek written language. It, could, it has both pronunciations, so I won't get into a debate on that. Rho, theta, and phi. And when we look at these coordinates, rho is definitely our three-dimensional radius. So if I were to attempt to go like this here, there's the y-axis and there's the z-axis, that's x of course, and we had a point. This distance from the point to the origin in three dimensions, that's rho. This point is directly above a location in the xy plane. That right there is our theta. So I'm just going to put a little note here. Um, this is in the xy plane. And then finally, the angle phi is from the positive z-axis. And I kind of overwrote my work here, but it would be from this place down to here would be the angle phi. Now again, we've, we've used this coordinate system before, so the expectation is you have seen a little bit of it. If you recall, we had some conversion formulas that uh, we used uh, to expedite the process of just converting between coordinate systems. But before I put that up on the screen here, let me just show you when we uh, have the triple integral, remember the r dr d theta was an area component in the xy plane, and then there's the third dimension. Well, it's much stranger in spherical coordinates. And you see that there's two extra, well, com uh, factors here, three extra factors if you count this twice. Rho squared sine of phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. This entire expression here that is our dv, that is our volume component. When we get to a picture uh, soon, I'll try to give a, a different way of explaining this. We would most likely use spherical coordinate systems if there are things of circular or spherical nature in three dimensions. And you wouldn't just convert it just to convert it, you'd use it because there's an advantage to the system that you're working with. So, 
just flash back from our past earlier this semester, we had some conversion formulas for spherical coordinates. This isn't going to stay on the screen very long. Uh, the, most textbooks are going to have this information directly in there, or a quick search will find them. Um, the x squared plus y squared plus z squared is the radius squared, but x squared plus y squared is r squared, so there's a different way of writing it. Phi from the positive z-axis, and it is limited from 0 to pi. And then we have a variety of conversion formulas for x, y, z, and even r. And finally, our triple integration here. And I'm going to change this d to a q. Okay. So, let's take it for a little test drive. If you're ready. All right. I'm going to pull this aside. And I'm going to pull this aside. Here we go. Let's take it for a test drive on the actual equation of a sphere. Something that we would consider for volume. Okay. So I am going to look at a three-dimensional sketch. Uh, I'm going to draw my circle, put a belt on it. There's the third dimension back there. Your y-axis, your x-axis, and your z-axis. Uh, and the radius, that's right, three is the radius. And there's a few things that we're going to work with here, um, but let me just show you, first of all, its equation in spherical coordinates. If x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 9, then we would know that rho squared equals 9. And I'm going to say that rho equals 3. Now, when you use the square root principle, there could be two different square roots of this. But when you see the limits of integration, our limits are going to use only the positive values shortly. Okay? This is a piece of information we'll need. The other thing you should always, always, always use for spherical coordinates is the top view. The top view, or our traditional xy plane, will show a circle of radius 3 if we look from directly from above. Oh, my child was hurting there. And that circle will be a radius 3. But the important part about this is it shows that theta is 0 to 2 pi. And that theta is the one aspect from our cylindrical or polar coordinates that we need to carry into our new um, volume calculation. Now, top view. There's one more visual we're going to include in a moment. But let me just skip down to um, a place to put our answer so we can better see what it is I haven't shown you yet. All right, so place for my volume. Nice little triple integration. Rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. We've already determined that theta and rho are partially known. 
theta is 0 to 2 pi, and the radius is everywhere from 0 to 3 in all directions. But now I realize I don't know about this angle phi. So there's another diagram that is highly useful. And I could definitely better organize this page. But since you didn't know where we were headed at the beginning, this is kind of typical. This is that first attempt where you write it all down, but it's not as organized yet. I'm going to call this one the side view. There's the y-axis and there's the z-axis. The x-axis would be shooting straight out at us, okay? So I want you to see this side view. We would see, again, a circle of radius three here. The angle phi is from the positive z-axis all the way down. So the angle phi is from zero to pi, I claim. I'm gonna show you why you don't go past pi. Reason one. This isn't a good reason. The formula says not to. The formula says not to. That's not a great reason, like I said. But that is a reason, and I'm going to hold to it as, a, as one of my, the law says. Now, the reason we don't go any further than that is that to see the other side of the sphere has to do with how we rotated in the xy plane. And if there was a point on the other side of the sphere, Theta would aim us over here, and then the angle would go down from there, the angle phi, that is. So if theta is zero, phi goes from zero to 90 degrees and points below to 180 degrees. On this side, theta is a bigger angle, but again, phi, zero to pi over two to pointing straight down. To rotate all the way around the sphere, that's what theta's job is. We just want to know how far down from the top does the sphere go. Well, it goes all the way down underneath. So here we go. Zero to pi. This is so much easier when I can stand in front of the class and use my arms to model it. But we're stuck with this for the moment. Now, let's look at some variations of this. Okay. So here we go. That's the full sphere. So what if I adjusted it just a little bit? All right, let's look carefully here. It would appear that the only difference is right here. And that, my students, is the angle phi. And like I just indicated, if you use the side view, y and z, if phi only goes from zero to pi over two, I wonder what that means for the sphere. Theta still goes 0 to 2 pi, so it's going to rotate all the way around the z-axis. But phi only goes from 0 to pi over 2. Well, what that means for our picture y-axis, x-axis, z-axis. What that means for us 
is we're only looking at the upper hemisphere. The upper hemisphere. Now I considered um, downloading various images and having some nice 3D graphics or 3D looking graphics better than my hand pictures. And then I remembered something that I like to sh share in my classroom. If you want to get better at something, you have to practice it. And my goal for the class is to get better at three-dimensional drawing than we are now. And this may not be a work of art, but it hopefully represents the upper hemisphere just fine. Now, almost finished. One more variation. What if I did not change the original angle phi, but I changed the value for theta? Well, as I indicated, for theta, we look at the top view. which was a circle, x-axis, y-axis, and we would be looking at this portion of the circle. In two dimensions, we would call this the top half of the circle, but we're going in the direction of the positive y-axis. For the sphere, all right, z axis, x axis, y axis. What this means for us is the portion of the sphere we're interested in is the part of the sphere that's not in the negative y direction, but it's in the positive y direction. It is literally everything on this side. You could call it the right hemisphere even, the right hemisphere. Now for each of these variations, one thing that you should maybe try to do is see if you could set up the same volume calculation, but could you do it in the XYZ world, rectangular? Could you do it in the cylindrical world? And I think you'll find in some of our previous videos, we have dabbled a little bit in there. Um, all right, we will do more examples, but not in this video.